All right, 7 o'clock. Welcome, everybody. We'll call the meeting to order. Ben is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. Is there anybody here who's for the bridge meeting here for the... All right, then we'll move into the agenda. Um, next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our Board of Selectmen meeting of November 4th. Move that we approve the meeting minutes for the November 4th regular meeting. Second. Any questions, comments, suggested revisions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. That motion carried. Thank you. I uh, don't believe we have any recommended appointments for the vacancies. So the next item on our agenda is, um, well, I put my stuff out of order, uh, Board of Education GASA contract. Uh, Mike, you did a little bit of a cover memo. You want to give us an introduction? And then we'll... Yes. Uh, so in the audience, we have Board of Education Chairperson Monica Logan. She has done a summary of the contract that is before you today. It's a little bit different than the traditional Municipal Employee Relations Act contracts that you've received before from me. This one uh, has certain timetables that are collective bargaining for teachers. It's generally called the Teachers Negotiation Act. Uh, Connecticut has three collective bargaining laws, uh, one of them covering teachers. The laws are similar uh, to municipal employees and state employees, but they also contain significant differences. The major differences is in the scope of bargaining in that this particular contract uh, does not include retirement over retirement, does not include issues of retirement, and it also needs to be settled before the local budget submission date. Um, the three laws contain requirements for legislative approval. You may do one of three things tonight or within the next 30 days. You may accept it and approve it. You may not act on it or you may reject it. Uh, if you reject it, there are certain levels of arbitration and mediation that go into play. If you approve it, you're done. If you do no, if you take no action within the next 30 days, it is deemed as if it were approved. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I will turn it back to you and you can decide how the body moves forward. Yeah, Monica, do you want to, anything you want to add? Uh, I don't have anything specific to add beyond the memo, but if you have any questions or concerns or anything you'd like to discuss, um, the process itself was extremely amicable um, in regard to our administrators. It's obviously a much smaller pool than what we see for our teachers, um, and, and it went fairly smoothly. We made some additions. Just to, one quick mo thing to clarify, and then I'm happy to take any questions. Um, you'll notice that if you, when you see the percentage increase in the salaries, 1.75 plus 2.25 plus 2.25 does not equal 11. 7.53% in the second paragraph, and I just wanted to provide some reasoning why. So there were some differences in the steps. Some people were moved around in the steps because we have a new director of pupil services, and that moved from a step from a level three to a level five, so that kind of changed the total percentage um, that you see there. But the total percentage is 11.53 over three years, uh, which is well within, um, uh, similar to other districts. So I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for doing this work. Good. Mm -hmm. um, I think they go um, for all of our educators, they're just like our municipal employees in a lot of ways. We're always asking them to do more with less and um, appreciate everybody who put the effort into uh, getting this contract extension negotiated. Um, does anybody else have any, any questions? Monica. I have I have one. Sure. Um, just for clarification, on the language that was added about the retired administrators prior to one one twenty four seven one twenty five. Correct. So is that anybody that retires, like, 
going forward, or does it grandfather anybody who may have retired for those two years? Basically, it the the retirement provision here or in regard to the medical, everybody that's an administrator now would be grandfathered in, but anyone that's hired going forward will no longer be entitled to those same benefits. Basically, we're grandfathering that provision out of the contract. Okay. Okay. So it, it, it's, it's a cost savings for us. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No questions. I just want to thank Monica for her work in bringing this to us. And I was wondering if you wanted to introduce your little assistants. Um, my, my ad hoc board of education members yes. over there. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, William Peters and Alexander Peters. And I believe Alexander is friends with your grandson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> Say that again. He's what? Uh, he, Xander is friends with uh, Peggy's grandson. Oh. They're both in fourth grade. Right. Awesome. So they had to join me this evening because daddy's at another meeting. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the pleasure of the board? As Mark outlined, Mark, you've been here longer than I. We've had um, you know, three options. We can uh, vote to endorse it. We can do nothing, in which, it, in which case it will take effect. Or we can uh, reject it and send it through a process. My experience from the Board of Ed side is usually the Board of Selectmen takes no action unless, you know, there's a reason to do otherwise, but um, whatever the Board wants to do. What is your guys' pleasure? Sometimes in the past we've taken an affirmative vote on it, right. uh, indicating our support of the Board of Ed, their negotiating team, and the administrators and their negotiating team. Yep. Is that what you want to do? I'll make that motion. All right. Maybe for the benefit of Mike, who drafted the motion, we can read his motion. <laughs> I will. Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen hereby approves, as presented, the attached Granby uh, Association of School Administrators Collective Bargaining Labor Agreement dated July 1st, 2025 through June 30th, 2028. Second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. We very much appreciate your support. She owes you guys a cheeseburger or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next item on the agenda is communications system agreement. Let me do a brief kickoff of this and then I'll turn it over to Mike. So obviously this has appeared on our agenda a number of times. Um, this is the first um, I guess it's the second since we approved the acquisition of the property um, official agreement um, of one of many to bring this project to fruition. Um, I'm going to ask Mike to give a little bit of background here, but my, my recommendation is uh, tonight, if you go to page two of Mike's memo, he's, he's laid out three potential motions. Um, my suggestion is we table the first two tonight and we um, take those up on December 2nd, and I'll explain why in a second. And then uh, the third, we could move forward tonight if people are comfortable with it. The third just authorizes um, myself and Mike uh, to execute the documents and to begin the process to take advantage of the grant that uh, we received from the state. Um, on the first two, um, there are two reasons why I think we should, um, two slash three reasons why uh, we should I'll table this until the second. First is there are some language changes that we are still working on. They're, they're relatively minor, but uh, you know, there's no reason to rush and not get those incorporated in here. So if we didn't do that, we would have to do it subject to the, those revisions being made by you know Mike and the team. No reason not to just um, go ahead and include those. The second is, and I, I apologize because I did not notice this until this morning, but the backup that was available to you all and to the public did not include the exhibits. And the exhibits are important um, because often if you read this agreement, we're, we're relying on the language in those exhibits. So I think, um, you know, giving the public an opportunity to have those and give you guys an opportunity to have them uh, makes um, uh, some sense. And um, so given those three things, um, I think we, Mike can kind of introduce it tonight. We can get any high level questions that you have out. But that would be my preference. You can certainly hold all three motions, but if you guys are comfortable with the motion to kind of start the process for executing on the grant, that, that'd be helpful too. So go ahead, Mike. 
All right. Uh, this process started about six and a half years ago, and that was with the creation of the Granby Radio System Committee. With the exception of Lost Acres Fire Chief John Orr, everyone on the committee has been, uh, uh, I won't say replaced, but moved along, retired, and so forth. So there's a brand new set of people that have rejoined Chief Orr to move this forward. Uh, at the time, based on the committee's work, they determined that the existing radio system that handles our emergency communications was not only obsolete in many ways, but inadequate due to the topography in the general Granby area. So as I mentioned, that assessment and determination spanned over several years. And again, the common denominator, and we're thankful for him, is uh, Lost Acres Fire Chief John Orr, who is leading this project. Along the way, a request for qualifications was issued. That was back in May of 21. And Marcus Communications was engaged to begin a formal assessment of our radio communication system. In May of 2023, a request for proposal was issued. Same type of thing. We took the assessment, reissued it, and sought uh, a company out to uh, buy the equipment from. At the same time, a company called Federal Engineering, and they responded to a separately issued RFP. And simply because of the sophisticated nature of this equipment, they were hired really to assist the town to sort through the noise and really get the best system for the dollars. Uh, after extensive analysis, we put a uh, question before the voters totaling $4.6 million. I think my memo has 4.9, but it was 4.6. And then in April of 2024, the voters favorably approved the allocation of capital monies set aside. Now, continuing on, Marcus, uh, with funding in place, began contract negotiations with the town, and those, again, were completed by Chief Orr. Our outside attorney uh, with Halloran and Sage, Attorney Joseph Fortner, uh, finished up the negotiations in the contract that you see before you meets with their approval, uh, minus the exhibits, as Mark had said. Now, subsequent to the work completed on the assessment and the contract, the uh, legislative delegation uh, associated with the town of Granby, as well as the work of some of the Board of Selectmen came forward, and the state awarded us $2 million from the Department of Energy, uh, I'm sorry, the Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection to offset a large portion of the $4.6 million. So in order for us to move forward, there were three motions. The first was to allow us to lock in the pricing with Marcus, sign that contract, but we're tabling that tonight. A second is to further extend the federal engineering contract with a not to exceed cap, but I believe we're tabling that tonight. But the one we would like to move forward with is I received a package of paperwork from the Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection. Uh, and that will allow us to begin the paperwork, to submit the paperwork uh, for an administrative plan, a statement of work, and a project budget. That will allow the money to flow back to us as soon as we have the contract in place and start to expend money for it. So that's the state of where we are. Um, as I mentioned in previous reports, uh, we have moved forward with the 824 hearing, and we got permission from the board to move forward on the uh, acquisition of 229 Mountain Road. We also have the utility vehicle, which is in place, and this is the bulk of the contract that will allow that $4.6 million vision that the, uh, was placed in front of the voters in April to become a reality. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mike. And I'll start down on this end. Does anybody have any preliminary questions about the contract or anything additional you want to see before we bring it back on the second, besides the exhibits? Uh, no, nothing additional for me. Thank you. Are we still on track budget-wise on this project? We are immediately under tremendous pressure. Um, that means at the moment we are on track for $4.6 million, but the chief has already identified about $100,000 to $120,000 of things like a second radio channel so that there's not cross-communications. Um, we are seeing pressure on the overall cost. We are relieved that we have $2 million more from the state. When I say there's pressure, the 4.6 million might be 4.7, might be 4.8, but as a separate discussion, unrelated to the Marcus contract, we'll come back and determine 
what did we promise the voters? You know, what was the 4.6? Is this an overrun related to what we promised, or is this an additional on top of what we have promised the voters? So um, thank you for the question. We are immediately under pressure uh, based on rising costs. So um, also page three has the total contract cost for this portion of it. That number um, includes things that we may not need to move forward on. So we will we'll be putting this in forward to you with this portion of the contract sort of being the worst case scenario, but we're we'll working down. Our goal would be to work down from that number in this, this component of it. But that was one of the things that I wanted to make sure everybody was comfortable with and want to make sure the language is clear that we can do that, that if we end up in a project that we think we can do for 3.5, we can do it for 3.5. Does that make sense? Yes. Any other, any other questions, Peggy? Nope. And are you thinking that the, the pressure is over and above what we put in for contingency? Because I remember we had conversation with the chief around that. Yeah, we have approximately 400,000 in contingency, and um, we are at about 4.7 million in total. So yes, we have eaten through the contingency, and there's a little bit more pressure beyond that. Okay. Um, but again, we want to, um, so, so there's a couple of schools of thought going on. Uh, we do this type of capital improvement, which is a big deal, and there are many police officers, firefighters, ambulance residents, their safety is at stake. We want to do this right. Um, I don't believe there's any fluff in terms of what we need. There are bona fide things that we have to go, should we pay $20,000 for a second channel? Is that worth it? My uh, I certainly defer to Chief Orr. I think the answer is yes, in which case we want to come back to the Board of Selectmen. We want to deliver everything we promised to the citizens, as well as to be transparent with the Board. We want to get the best system, even if that means there's pressure on the original budget. And again, I, I'm not seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars, but I am seeing 100 to 150,000 of pressure over and above the 4.6 right now. We still uh, have only a budget number for the road to get power up there. I suspect that will be under pressure too because there's quite a bit of rock up there on the mountain. Uh, we paid a little bit more for the property, not a heck of a lot more, but just a little bit more. And we paid just a little bit more for the UTV. So those are the things that continue to put pressure on it. And again, being totally transparent, we wanna make the best long-term decisions because we don't do this often. And at what point do we have do we have to go back to the um, to the town to have them vote? It, it depends how we decide. Uh, of course, nothing needs to be done if we skinny the number right, down. Right. No, but if we find that the best path forward is to spend a little bit more, I'll present funding solutions to you, and each one will probably be a different path with respect to uh, letting the voters know what we're doing. Okay. Thanks. Sure. No, I mean, just it's been a long process and long overdue for updates, so I don't think I understand the pressure, but I don't think you want to short it in a absolutely yeah, exactly. And some of these some of these items in here, this is again why we're take a couple extra weeks to make sure we know what we're getting into here. And you guys remember part of some of the budget items of the the taxpayers approved were actually really more operating costs. We were prepaying certain operating costs in terms of warranty and those kind of things and replacements and so on and so forth. So there's there are way we'll we will make sure we stay on top of it, but this will be the next step to move through that. All right. Um, so uh, Mike, will you make may just make a note to get the exhibits out and maybe maybe in, uh, get uh, Kathy to amend the and just so that there are attachments that the public would have access to right away as well. Yes. And um, if anybody, well, I, would, I would ask you, actually ask everybody to spend, because we're going to get into the you know Thanksgiving holidays and stuff like that. You know, as soon as we get the exhibits, do you really drill into them? And if you have questions, let's get them to Mike ahead of time, before the December 2nd. Um, 
And then is everybody comfortable with going forward with the third motion that's in our agenda, though, which is to start the grant documentation process? Or do you want to wait until you have an agreement in place? I don't see any reason to wait. Yeah, I'm in favor of starting our paperwork, but the state could take a while. All right, so I would accept the motion that's listed as motion number three on page two. All right, I will move that the Board of Selectmen direct First Selectman Mark Fiorentino by this resolution to execute any and all paperwork related to the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Pretend Protection Municipality Grant Program notice of Granby's awarding total two million and to make all required filing and reporting associated with the grant, including but not limited to the following, the administration plan, the grantee point of contract form, statement of work, and project budget. I'll second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the consideration of a tax uh, appeal settlement for the Bay Great Matter. Mike, um, very good memo explaining what the issue is. Want to add anything to your memo? Yeah, I'll just say that uh, every five years the town completes a state mandated revaluation. In this particular case, as part of revaluation, a company called uh, Bay Grape. Um, they are located at 350 Salmon Book Street, and it's a nursing home. They had a fair market value of $5.2 million, and through negotiations and subject to a trial that we both would like to avoid, uh, they would like to settle at $4.9 million. When you turn that into an assessment, uh, that's $3.6 million, which is 70% of the $5,152,000. We moved it down to $4.9 million. That's a settlement uh, or an assessed value of $3,430,000 or a reduction of $176,890. When you apply that to the mill rate in year one of revaluation, it's a tax reduction on an annual basis of $5,000. $641, and then for the current year, 5860 We don't have mill rates determined for the coming three years, but I estimate they'll be anywhere from about $6,000 to about $6,350. In total, over the five years, that's a $30,000 reduction, and the motion that uh, the board will uh, hopefully pass is based on our attorney, Mike Collins, also of Halloran and Sage, who negotiated the settlement with Bay Grape. And a shout out goes to our assessor, Thomas Esser Sue Altieri, who also had a hand in it. It basically uh, directs Sue to create a certificate of correction, moving the assessed value uh, down to the 3430000 the reduction in 176890 for the two years underway, which represents a little bit more than $11,000, she will uh, apply the certificate of correction to the second installment of their current year tax amount. And that is consistent with the settlement agreement that's attached. Uh, we basically then will set the assessment on future years at the lower amount. And the grand list will be fine. They will be made whole. We will. Uh, abide by the hearing, but because that is a settlement, it must come to the board for approval. That's why it's before you tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mike. Any questions or comments? No, it's a pretty complete memo, so yeah, nothing for me. So, revals every 10 years, right? Five. There's five from okay. Yep. Okay. So, no, I'm good then. Yeah, I would have two comments. One, the amount of tax we're talking about, we would eat up an attorney's fees pretty quickly, so it seems like a pretty reasonable um, settlement to me. And also, when your attorney tells you that the judge has suggested that you uh, settle the case, probably a good idea to settle the case. <laughs> Which are, the memo, if you read it carefully, um, is our attorney's advice. So. Um, I'm okay with this. 
Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to keep the uh, town assessor involved in this process and that she's in agreement too on the uh, outcome of this agreement. All right, before I call for a motion, Mike, I just had one of it. So does this resolve all the all of the cases that were filed? The other one's kind of resolved. I, right? I am only aware that this was in a single outstanding case, which is uh, somewhat uh, unique uh, related to, uh, I, I know, Granby. Uh, certainly has a smaller number of properties, but uh, coming from the community that I had, we normally had 125 to 150 of these, yeah. and we were only five times larger. So that, that gives you some sense um, of the good work uh, and the stable property values that, that are here at Granby. Yeah, if my recollection is cor correct, I think we had initially three or four appeals filed. I think all the other ones withdrew their appeals, so I've heard the change. There's, there was a change in state law last year, and for so there used to be a handful of law firms that would, on a percentage of savings basis, would throw spaghetti at the wall and see what stuck. Now you have to go in there with an appraisal. You just can't say, let's see what we can get. Um, and that has um, very much slowed down the market of law firms challenging Connecticut assessments. I think that's a good thing. Yep. All right. If there's no other questions or concerns, I'd accept the motion that's shown in our backup. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the settlement between Bay Grape Associates LLC and the Town of Granby by reducing the fair market value of the real estate parcel located at 350 Salmon Brook Street from 5152700 to four million nine hundred thousand, having an assessed value of seventy percent, or three million four hundred thirty thousand, resulting in a decrease to the assessment of one hundred and seventy-six thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars for the grand list dates beginning October first, twenty twenty-two, and continuing annually th through October first, twenty twenty-six and to further direct the town assessor to process a certificate of correction for the October 1, 2022 and 2023 grand list dates and working with the tax collector reduce the second installment of the Bay Grape tax bill due by January 31st, 2025 to reflect this reduction in tax due to the town of Granby. If you have any questions, on the aforementioned, oh, that's from. <laughs> I didn't have no space to put right, on two more lines. I have to see the same. <laughs> Second. Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Next item on our agenda is it turns out we own an interest in a cemetery in uh, Suffield. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we were contacted by the town of Suffield, who was contacted by a uh, group called the Mountain Burying Ground Association. And uh, essentially, uh, through Suffield's request, we would be surrendering this small parcel, which we call an ancient burial ground in Suffield. And before we can do that, we need a referral. Uh, if indeed the Board of Selectmen was in agreement that uh, in order to better maintain the property, we should surrender it to the Mountain Burying Ground Association, we would first have to go through an 824 hearing, much like we did for 87 Simsbury Road and 229 Mountain Road. The planning and zoning would report back that it was consistent with our plan of conservation and development. And then a second motion uh, to basically surrender it would be in order. We've run this by our corporation counsel, Rich Roberts, and he concurs because it's a surrender. There would be no town meeting required. And if the Board of Selectmen uh, were in agreement, there's no uh, adverse consequences that we're aware of. So to be clear, we're just being asked tonight to refer to our planning commission. That's correct. Anybody have any objection to that? No. Nope. No. Do we know what the size of the parcel is? Um, sure, it looks like two acres. I'm not good at estimating. Right here. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's about two acres. Oh, okay. I missed Do we need a motion? Um, yes, we would. We would have a motion to refer this to the planning and zoning commission. 
I think it's on the second page there. Yep. I'll move that the Board of Selectmen refer this matter to the Planning and Zoning Commission for consideration under CGS 8-24. Second. second. Kelly's the second. We'll give that second to Kelly. It's hard to drag people. Any, <laughs> any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Next item on the agenda is the town manager's report. Take it away, Mike. A uh, few highlights. Uh, this is the particular manager's report that highlights the projects. Uh, and I won't read everything on the commentary, but just a few highlights for those that are watching. Uh, we continue to plan for the 1119, that is tomorrow, starting at 2 p.m. The Connecticut Sighting Council hearing on the KCE battery project from 2 to as long as 6.30. That will be for the expert witnesses on KCE to present why they think this is a good site. Once that closes, the town steps up and we present our experts. Uh, Mark uh, Gottlieb, uh, John Oates, and Kate Bednaz are our experts. Uh, Mark Fiorentino, our first selectman, will also testify. I don't know when in the afternoon that will be, other than their side starts at 2 p.m. The hearing will be concluded uh, perhaps at 6.30 or maybe a little bit earlier to allow the public to weigh in. We encourage anybody in the public who wants to weigh in to check our town website or the Connecticut Sighting Council website for the team's link so that you can either monitor the hearings or weigh in on them. Salmon Brook Park Walking Trail, uh, we've set a community walk for Saturday, 11.30 at 9.30 a.m., meaning November 30th at 9.30 a.m. We'll be pushing some information out through Facebook and social media and the website, uh, but we welcome everybody to take a walk around that one and a quarter mile oval. The fiscal year 26 budget meetings have begun and a status memo will be sent, uh, sometimes called the plus one memo, will be sent to the Board of Selectmen for your first meeting in December so you have an idea of what we're seeing. We've issued two RFPs, one for the Park Infrastructure Review and a second for a library capital campaign consultant. If you recall, you placed that funding uh, as part of the American Rescue Plan Act at the last meeting, and we have to act fairly quickly on it since we have to have it obligated by December 31st. Uh, working with the Commission on Aging as well as the first selectmen, we held a total of four uh, Kearns senior housing meetings. We'll move to formal interviews in December, and at some point in time, uh, we will come before the Board of Selectmen uh, asking for your support as we seek to negotiate with one preferred developer. We worked with the Board of Ed and locked in diesel, gasoline, and heating oil prices for 2025. Those are uh, down a bit from last year, which is good, and simply due to the global, um, the possibility of global unrest, we decided uh, let's take let's take a reduction as opposed to wait a little longer to see if they drop further. The coordinated the action of the Board of Selectmen to reactivate the CPAC committee, and that first meeting will be December 2nd at 5 p.m., and Mark just gave me the agenda, so we will push that out in short order. A couple of uh, min minute, meeting minutes and notes. Um, as we had mentioned earlier in the meeting, there is a bridge meeting down the hall. That is on Route 189. It will be closed for uh, quite a while, and the detour is ex expansive. So um, if anybody wants to weigh in on that proposal, they can do so online or in person. There is a, continues to be a red flag warning. We, just about all of the state of Connecticut, if not entire New England, is a con, uh, fire danger, considerable fire danger. So we have a red flag warning out there reminding everybody no fires, no anything. Uh, hopefully we'll get about an inch of rain on Thursday that'll help mitigate it, but it won't completely solve it. I took a call on Friday from a concerned resident, uh, given the situation of the drought, and I simply reaffirmed that the town of Granby, like many of the other municipalities, has an emergency management office. And while, we, while there's no way we can possibly drill on every contingency, we do have plans in the event that there uh, people's well would run dry. We have a responsibility to truck in water. We would work with uh, 
a query on and salmon brook water. We would possibly lean on our friends at MDC, which have exceptionally deep reservoirs at Bark Hampstead. But what I reassure the resident is we sit on one of the largest aquifers in New England. So if anybody is having problems with wells, well, we can't fix the well, not necessarily something that's in government's power, we would still like to know about it so we can prepare uh, an appropriate response. And I'm heading down to Glastonbury probably in the next two to three weeks. The annual meeting of Region 3, which is the region that Granby is in, where we practice drills like this, uh, will be held. And I'll ask some of the other towns what exactly are they doing in the event this drought uh, continues on. But I think more importantly, given that we have climate change, if we uh, dodge it this year, you know, after some significant rain or maybe a, a, a snowy winter, we'll probably be facing this somewhere down the road. So it's probably not a bad thing to spend a little bit of time and plan for exactly what happens in the event that we have a continuous drought. And finally, I just wanted to share, we had a veterans event today. Um, the Lieutenant Governor came down from Hartford and there were approximately 75 Vietnam era veterans at the high school. Uh, with their families, they numbered about 175. Each one was, recommend, uh, was um, recognized for their service in the Vietnam War. And the Lieutenant Governor had five or six different veterans from different branches uh, that came forward to the microphone and, and spoke a little bit about their service and shared with those in the audience and, and those uh, of us who were there um, some poignant stories. So our hats go off to all the veterans. Our hats go off especially to the Granby veterans. And uh, every once in a while when you attend one of those, you remember uh, how great a place uh, the United States and, and Granby in particular is. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to highlight on the financial. You or Kimmy want to highlight on the financial portion of the report? I do. I'll turn it over to Kimmy in one second, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to draw everybody's attention to the ARPA report, which is the last page. Um, the budget financials, which are the preceding pages, uh, we, we have the usual pressure from overtime and public works and police, but the thing I want to draw everybody's attention to on the ARPA report is over to the right-hand side, there's a whole lot of zeros in there. And that means we've successfully crossed those items off of our to-do list. There were a total of 27 new items in phase two, and except for the items on the bottom, all of those have been checked off. So we still have a lot of work. We have a payment to make on the walking trail. That's been obligated, so we're fine. We have some improvements at the PD waiting. Holcomb Farm, we have some concrete work going over there in the crosswalk. We've uh, signed a contract with the town center consultant. We hope to sign a contract for the park and rec study. And we have wastewater facilities plan a contract ready to sign. Capital campaign consultant, we hope we, uh, we get a, a bidder and we can sign a contract there. And then finally, the animal shelter. Uh, Betsy, Kirk, uh, and everybody involved from Public Works is doing a great job there. But the preponderance of zeros there is a great sign. We're obligating and spending the money you directed us to. So I just wanted to point that out and give a shout out to everybody who's working double duty. Um, people look at me strange when I say spending money in government's a hard thing <laughs> because there are protocols, there are purchasing rules, there are contracts, and to, to get this stuff moving um, takes a whole concerted effort. So I just wanted to, for those people involved, the shout out that they're doing great work. Kimmy, you have anything to add? Um, I think one thing to add, after I did the, um, the Arbor report, uh, I got the information that the senior center allocation should be 100,000 instead of 25,000. So I will reflect that in the next Arbor report. And for the budget operation, we got the first installment for the um, education cost sharing in, in October, which is 25% um, of the total grant, which is um, close to, I think it's really about $2 off from our budget amount. And I don't have anything else to ask. I will take questions at this time. 
Any questions? Nope. No. Um, so I have two things. Uh, I just want to echo that, Mike. Uh, this is, uh, we, in my opinion, thanks to your leadership and Kimmy's leadership and everybody who's worked on this, we've done a tremendous job with this ARPA. Not only making sure we met the deadlines and balanced out spending exactly every penny, but no, not a penny more. Um, but we've done a lot of great work that we would otherwise not have gotten to in Granby. A lot um, of improvements in a lot of different systems. So, um, and then my, my only question would be, so the, the change that Kimmy mentioned in the senior center, that that's a significant change. Did we just report it wrong? No. no. Um, so the goal of the senior center was always to create a second satellite um, public venue for meetings where we have the ability to do Teams or Zoom, where we have microphones, where we have uh, equipment that Mark or somebody can run, uh, and um, we have to move a couple of oil tanks out of the way to get that all done. So the racking, the oil tank removal, four cameras that can be remotely controlled, microphones, the whole nine yards uh, approaches, the original thought was around 25, it is closer to 100. So Kimmy is pulling that out of the, um, call it the, the wash bucket that, that is affectionately called roads, so that uh, on the days uh, which are frequent, especially now with early voting, uh, the public works people don't have to come in, tear it down, have a meeting, set it up, and do that 14 times you know, over the course of the election cycle. So um, it does seem like a lot of money, but you're getting updated electronics to duplicate the ability to have meetings in a secondary location. Which I'm very, very supportive. I think we need it. I smile because so, uh, the, all, the other good news is that the cost to remove the oil tanks is buried in the capital plan somewhere, so we found some relief in the capital plan. Yeah. Because, uh, so they're finally getting the oil tanks removed. They that's are. Good. <laughs> so that's excellent work. All right. Um, any other questions? Good work, everybody. All right, we'll move on to the first selectman report. I'll go quick because Mike mentioned a lot of the stuff. And I honestly don't remember if I've done this, but even if I did, it's worth saying again. I want to give a shout out to everybody who worked on election day and Scott's team and Laura and Paul's team and Mark was one of our moderators. Um, uh, we did a tremendous job in Grammy. We had an 86% turnout. I was there the whole day. Uh, I, I worked one early voting day, and I was there the whole day. You know, the, the workers work largely without pay. They work for cookies, really, honestly. They work 8, 10, 12-hour shifts. They come from a variety of different political persuasions and backgrounds, and without exception. Everybody put the integrity of our election day above all of that. They treated each other with kindness and respect, and there was a lot of, you know, just it was a very, very good atmosphere. And I watched how it, um, it um, radiated outwards from there, because I can tell you with almost no exception, um, in a you know a, a stressful election for all of us, um, the voters were exactly the same way. Everybody was kind to each other. They were respectful. We had some issues that had to be resolved. We always do, um, but because of the large turnout, you know the number of um, you know issues to make sure people were properly registered was a little bit more. People just did a wonderful, wonderful job. We could not have that kind of turnout and that kind of results. Um, uh, we couldn't afford to do it without all of those folks um, dedicating their time. So I really, really am very grateful. And if, if, if we needed a starting point in Granby of what we could rally around that none of us could disagree with, that's it right there. Nobody could disagree with the way we handle our elections. I'm very proud of our workers. They should, they should be proud of themselves. The veterans uh, ceremony was wonderful. I do want to thank again. I thanked her in person, the Lieutenant Governor and uh, the Commissioner Welsh and Mike and um, Jennifer Kilbasa from the Senior Center, who is our municipal agent on Veterans Affairs. M Mark, also Scott Nolan played a huge role in getting all that correspondence out. Yeah, thank you, Scott. It really was a very neat ceremony. And also the American Legion Post, our local uh, Post 182, um, did a lot of the background work in helping getting those names out too. So great, uh, great effort. 
Mike mentioned the walking path. I want to mention it to you all again. I'm hoping actually that besides a walk, we do like a little ribbon cutting ceremony, something like that that day. So I, I hope if you guys can get it on your calendar, I hope you can. Um, and then Mike also uh, mentioned the battery project. We are, we are prepared. We are doing exactly what I promised you would do. Um, I don't know, as Mike said, based on what our council is telling us, I don't even know if our side will get hurt tomorrow. Um, but we will get hurt. I'll just do, I'll schedule a second uh, evidentiary hearing. Um, so anybody in the audience who is still wanting to comment on that project, I, um, you can go to the town website. You can click on a link for the 6:30 public comment. Just I have to remind everybody that uh, under their rules, you have to email them in advance that you want to testify, so that they know that you're uh, they can authenticate you when it's time to call on you in the, in the meeting. So um, so far, very grateful and proud of the work we're doing. I think as we mentioned, again, only in Granby. Um, two of our three experts are not charging us a dime. They're, um, they're, they're doing, providing the service uh, uh, pro bono to the town. So um, a lot of work to do, but um, big day tomorrow. So, all right, I think that's all I had. Mark? Um, along the lines of the voting, as it turned out, one of the races in town in the second district was so close overall, I went half of 1%. We had to do a recount. Uh, Scott was there along with the uh, volunteers, and we did a Sunday afternoon recount of our votes to make sure that uh, Granby's total was accurate and complete. And I'm hoping you're here to report that it was accurate and complete. <laughs> <laughs> it is now accurate, yes. <laughs> Anything else? No. Peggy? Um, yesterday, the police department and the social services department held a fill the cruiser event oh, at Stop yesterday. and Shop. It was yesterday. And uh, I was there at the very beginning of it, and it looked like they were well on their way to filling the cruiser. So nice job. Well, excellent. Yeah, and I was, I was going to bring up the same thing. I went a little later in the day, and, and they were getting pretty packed. So it was great to see so many people from the community come out and donate. <laughs> great. Nothing for me. Oh, God. Oh, that's a cool picture. Yeah, you pass that up. Oh, God. Yeah. All right, so just real quick, building on the theme of Veterans Day, I'm not sure if this was noted last week, but uh, we did have each grade be spoken to by a group of four or five veterans, which was uh, very interesting, especially as a senior, just seeing the careers. Um, for the National Honor Society, they're already looking forward to the turkey trot, where they raise money during our advisory for uh, local charities to help with people getting um, a proper Thanksgiving so they can actually fully enjoy it. Um, student government, we're also running a powder puff football game, so that means the junior girls and junior and senior girls are going to be playing a football game right before Thanksgiving, which is going to be very exciting. I will note very proudly that the seniors have a much better turnout, and I think we're going to absolutely smoke the juniors. Um, the uh, For the languages, for People in the upper language classes, we are going to Boston to see the Museum of Art in Boston in, on this Wednesday, which is very exciting. And then sports are really coming to an end with a lot of our seasons all over. Field hockey was over. They unfortunately went out in the second round to in pen, uh, a shootout. Girls soccer went out in the second round. Uh, boys soccer, we went out in the semifinals and penalty kicks. Um, and volleyball, they actually made it all the way to the final. I watched the match. It was very hard, but they very well fought. They had a, ended a great season as runners up for Class M for volleyball. And so the one remaining team is football that still has to uh, finish their season with, I believe, their last game, which will be on Friday home. So. All the, all a lot of heartbreak having it, the seasons end especially, um, but a lot of great seasons that have come to completion. So just a question on the football team: It's a regular season that ends Friday, right? Did they they haven't even started? They haven't even started the postseason. But they'll qualify, right? I think they, they are already are. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? 
All right, if not, we'll move on to the public session portion of our agenda. Yes. At the moment. We need to set the timer. Is there any risk that you will talk more than five minutes? No, no risk. Right. No risk, Mark. I'll keep it to five. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Jim Sipsky. I live on Stonewall Drive. Um, my topic is um, is considering the permanent preservation of Holcomb Farm, the farm itself, the the, not, the acreage that was not preserved two years ago, and the preservation of substantial acreage two years ago was was fantastic. Um, but that's the woodlands, the trails, etc. But the actual farm is not uh, not preserved. So my ask is that we initiate a dialogue with the Connecticut Department of Agriculture um, regarding their uh, preservation uh, agriculture easement program. That program has existed since 1979, and over 45 years has preserved about 50,000 acres. In current day, and actually this year, um, the state will pay up to $20,000 per acre um, for the agricultural easement. Um, this year, 23 properties were preserved, totaling 1,580 acres. Um, based on discussion I've had with Jamie Smith, who, with the Department of Agriculture, who leads that program, um, there are town-owned farms included in that. Um, our acreage, our property, would qualify for this payment. Um, and to, to bracket some math around this, obviously you'd have to go to a process to figure this out. Would you get $20,000 an acre? That would be based on an appraisal process. But to go through the process and sort of bracket this, I think we had about 35 acres of the farm that are not preserved. Clearly, I think you'd break out the event barn and the parking lot and the farmhouse. So let's say we preserve 25 acres. Let's say you tossed in the five acres of the former church property. So you preserve 25 to 30 acres. If you maxed out the, the easement, the agricultural easement payment from the state, that would be five to six hundred thousand dollars. So you have a 20 year lease on the farm today. The farm is beloved by me, it's beloved by everyone. It is an integral part of the, the community. A 500 CSA share farm is so unique. 25% of the crop, as you know, goes to fresh access, which is about 30,000 pounds. It's going to seven local charities. So tremendous asset to the town. Um, I believe the current lease was extended from 15 years to 20 years. So already the town has a long-term, is, well, is the property owner, has a long-term relationship with the farm. The farm is running very stably in Joe's 11th year as the farmer. Um, and I guess the 31st year, I believe, of Friends of Holcomb Farm. So with all that stability and permanence, I ask the question and say, hey, let's spend an hour talking to the Department of Agriculture. Um, and again, we can bracket this. Um, if, if you received $10,000 an acre, okay, you'd be looking, the town would be looking at a payment of $250,000 to $300,000. If you were at the high end of the assessment of 20,000 per acre, it would be a five to $600,000 payment on top of what you've which you wouldn't have today. You know, today you've got a stable farm, an excellent crew, an excellent farmer, uh, but in the future you could have an additional, let's call it half a million dollars, potentially. Permanence would then also give the farm, I think, the ability to really thrive further. Uh, I'm not here speaking for the Friends of Holcomb Farm, I'm speaking here as Jim Sipsky. But um, if we think about it, with permanence, any of the significant projects that they want to take on, um, uh, potentially, um, uh, uh, and if they want to look at uh, fundraising, with permanence, I think you'd get out of a sort of year to year, have we made the budget for this year, to begin to consider things such as endowments. Uh, so I, obviously I want to just pause and say, I can't even raise this issue if I didn't stop and as a fairly short term resident, didn't give thanks to all the volunteers over decades and decades that saved the place and have it operating well today. I mean, I volunteer at the farm, but it's, it's those decades of volunteers that have made it what it is today. Um, but with permanence, I think the town would benefit financially. And then going forward, um, you would give the farm a much more solid foundation uh, to thrive in the future. Within all that, you remember, um, Connecticut is the fourth most densely populated state in the country. New Jersey, 
Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut. Um, and although we have an abundance of fresh produce in our town, only 12% of the fruits and vegetables consumed in New England are actually grown in New England. The percentage is still incredibly small. So give it that permanent foundation, um, allow it to be part of a, uh, a permanent part of a resilient food system locally. So thank you. Again, the ask is invest an hour. I'd be glad to participate in it with, um, again, Jamie Smith, who leads the program for the Department of Agriculture, and take a look at the process. The process would uh, initially just start with a dialogue and would start with pro forma documentation. But any agricultural easement would be customized to the property. Like I said, they did 23 this year. They're all 23 or slightly different um, because they need to meet the needs of the, that actual farm and circumstance. So yep. thank you. I'd be glad to, not, not, can't say I'm a full expert on this entire process, but be glad to take any comments or questions. Thank you, Jim. Any, any questions? No. Very informative. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Not. I will close uh, the public session. Um, I will say, Jim, I actually appreciate that. And I'm not, if you were here for the, the background, I apologize. Um, I think well, I'll ask Mike to add it. We talk regularly, obviously, with the Friends of Holcomb Farm. Yep. And um, we'll add that to our agenda to discuss whether they've looked at that recently. I will tell you, we talked about it extensively a couple of years ago when we negotiated the deal that where we are today. And um, it, it was the same balance that we're going to look, we're going to find, I think, if we look at it again. Not to say we shouldn't look at it again, but it's the same, really the same issues. Is that that monetary payment is a one time payment and you got to make, you know, you're going to get it. But I have talked to, and others have talked to folks um, who have not had great luck with the agricultural easement program with the state because they end up 20 years later with the state controlling what can and cannot be done there. And so, and a lot of it, it wasn't anybody's fault. It's just they didn't understand, nobody had the foresight to try to predict 20 years later. So if we end up with a, a document that looks good today, but 20 years from now, it was something we didn't think of. We've lost control over what that, the, what that easement says and what we can and can't do. So when we looked at it a couple of years ago, we collectively, because we had other community partners, the Friends and the, the Land Trust and the town, decided to lean on the, the side of caution for now, because the system's working for all practical purposes, We've preserved it for the next 20 years, <laughs> and it's being managed by our partner. But we will add it to the list, and now's a good time to make sure it's on the Friends' radar if it's something that they want us, because we're going to be going through that analysis of the church. With that, if I may, I spoke in Come detail. Come back to the microphone. I, should, I always regret when I try to answer the questions because we really no. shouldn't have a bunch of back and forth. But uh, I, I appreciate your comments, Mark. And, and I guess I'm, I'm not here to speak for anyone else, but I did have a very lengthy discussion on this topic um, with Jenny and also with a number of board members. So um, I'm not going to try to put words in Jenny's mouth, but her sentiment was, please, go and have this discussion. Um, um, uh, I think she would be delighted if the farm was permanently preserved uh, again because it would open up the ability to, 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 to do lo truly long-term planning uh, for the farm. Uh, but she welcomed it. She says, look, I'm, you know, the friends are the tenant. They are not the landowner. So this is, this is a question for the landowner, the town. Uh, was was really, but again, I sure. want to be really cautious. I'm not trying to put words in Jenny's mouth, but no, we, we talked about it at length, and um, I, I, she would not put a stop to it. I, I, I don't believe, but right. understood. All right, thank so you. So we'll we'll make sure that's on our agenda to continue to keep it on our radar screen somewhere. All right. Anything else? If not, I don't. We don't have a need for an executive session, right? We do not. Then I would accept the motion to adjourn. Before, before I get that motion, um, we are trying to get our work done on the second, no promises, so that we would not need our second meeting in December. So, why are you looking at me like that? We are trying. <laughs> All right, I'll set the motion to adjourn, but unless there's an objection to us trying to get our work done by December 2nd, just a heads up. All right, move the way, Peggy. Second the motion. Offer the motion. Mr. Newman.
Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody.